You might think the title of this video is a little misleading and you're about to tell me that I do in fact still suck at PVM. You're not wrong, whilst I am slowly ticking off the combat achievements and making some big bank getting some big drops, I still need every advantage that I can get. The plugins in this video will not only help you to tackle any content in the game, some of them are going to teach you the core principles of OSRS that will be able to help you regardless of if you have the plugin turned on or not. I'm going to break down the essential things that you need to learn about into three categories, movement mechanics, prayer management and resource and inventory management. Movement mechanics will get you around the game and help you to avoid bosses attacks and potential hazards. Prayer management is essential in minimizing the damage you take and maximizing the damage you deal. Inventory and resource management will help ensure you've got fast gear switches maximizing the damage you deal and make sure you're never caught with your pants down missing stuff like dragon fire protection. It goes without saying that you're going to need Runelite to use most of these plugins, but the official client and mobile client are improving all the time. If you can't see these plugins on your default plugins list, you may need to download them from the Runelite plugin hub. These are monitored by the Runelite team, so you can trust things you download from here. As with all my guides, let's cut out the fluff and get started. We're starting with, in my opinion, the single most essential plugin for OSRS. But make sure to stick around to the end for some extra plugins that make some of the hardest content in the game infinitely easier. The first batch of plugins are all related to movement mechanics. The first plugin we're going to talk about is Tile Indicators. Turn this on and you'll notice a square appear under your character. This is your true tile, where your character is registered as being on the game server. If you're new to the concept of a true tile, your character icon isn't actually where the game registers you as being. It's always a few tiles behind your true tile. We can demonstrate this by walking or running. Notice how the true tile is slightly in front of my character. It's also moving two tiles at a time whilst running and one tile at a time whilst walking. If you don't understand why this is useful, let me show you an example. Here's me at Duke Succulus. Whilst running through these deadly laser eyes and shadows on the floor, I have no idea if I'm going to run into one of them as I can never be 100% sure where my character actually is. Let's turn tile indicators on. It's way easier to visualize the path to my destination tile. As well as just true tile, the plugin has two other components. Hover tile highlights the tile your mouse is over, ensuring for those precise clicks in sticky situations. Destination tile highlights where your character is walking to right now. This is super useful for working out if you're going to be dodging any obstacles on the way to your destination. If you can't see why this plugin's useful, turn it on after finishing this video and just give it a go. I guarantee some mechanics that you've been struggling with will all click pretty quickly. We'll briefly go over another tool that can help you massively with any boss, ground markers. Turn this on and if you hold shift and right click any tile in the game, you can highlight it. Do this again and you can label it, change the colour or remove it. It's not massively useful if you've no idea what you're highlighting and why, but when used in conjunction with a good boss guide, you can go to roommarkers.net and get a pre-made tile marker pack for pretty much any boss in this game. This was instrumental in my first bossing attempts, I wouldn't have completed Dragon Slayer 2 without it. If you're trying to learn a boss independently, you can mark tiles yourself. It's great for when you work out safe tiles during certain phases or attacks, or if you've just got an optimal place to stand to minimize damage received or maximize damage dealt. Our final movement mechanic related plugin is Better NPC Highlight, although it does have some crossover with some prayer management techniques. This plugin can be turned on to configure loads of different contextual highlights for NPCs. You can get the basics of this plugin by right clicking any monster in the game and pressing tag. This will highlight the NPC and show you the tiles that they're actually taking up. This is pretty handy on its own for alerting you when specific NPCs spawn, places like the Fight Caves, Inferno or Colosseum, if there's anything dangerous you desperately need to avoid. The main thing I use it for is spotting things like Whisperer Tentacles and Vardorvis' head prayer switch mechanic and his flying axes. If you don't want to have to shift click things in dangerous situations like this, or perhaps there's something you can't right click, you can enter the NPC IDs manually in the plugin. You can find these out on sites like Rune Locus, I'll put a link in the description. Before we move on to our next category, if you're a returning viewer to my channel, make sure to drop me a subscription so you catch all of my videos. I'm also starting to go live and it'd be awesome to catch up with you in the chat. Liking and dropping a comment also massively helps my channel out, so it is much appreciated. Next up, we only need one plugin to completely solve all of the problems with Prayer. It's the built-in Runelite Prayer plugin. It's got loads of features, so we'll tackle the most useful ones. 
Turning on the prayer flick location will help you with prayer flicking. If you're not familiar, prayer flicking is when you turn your prayer off and on very quickly. Prayer drain only registers if your prayer has been on for more than 0.6 seconds. So look at the prayer orb and flick your prayer off and on before the little blue line goes from one end to the other and you won't lose any prayer points. Before trying this at bosses, I'd advise to give this a go on a Slayer task or something. The plugin also enables prayer reordering. Right click the prayer icon and press enable. You can drag all of these items around into your preferred order and even right click to hide the ones that you don't want to use at all. OSRS has a built in prayer filter, but this can sometimes filter out prayers that you may want to use. So customizing your prayer book to make sure all of the prayers that you need are in easy to access locations can be a huge help. Like I said, this built-in prayer plugin does pretty much everything you need from a prayer management perspective, but if you've got any plugins that you use, let me know. Let's dive straight into inventory management and resource management. We'll talk about the potion management side of things first. The timers and buffs plugin will show you any buffs or nerfs to your stats, as well as any protection you may have. For example, anti-fire protection or venom protection. This is really useful for managing when you might need to reapply a stat boost in potion, sip on a super restore potion or reapply some protection. Another useful plugin for this is the item stats plugin. This allows you to view how much a potion is going to increase your stats by. Whilst this is useful for seeing if you're going to get the full effect of a prayer potion, brew or combat potion, it's also useful for seeing how much weapon and gear switches are going to improve your setup. Speaking of weapon and gear switches, inventory tags are essential for learners. Using the old shift right click, you can mark all of your switches, potions or whatever you like with easy to identify colour tags. I generally go red for melee stuff, green for ranged and blue for magic, but you can do whatever the heck you like. If you've got a spec weapon, I sometimes even tag this with yellow just to make things super clear. It's not just limited to gear and switches though, potions and food can be marked too, this is pretty useful for getting to grips with techniques like combo eating, where you use three different health restoring items at the same time. The last batch of plugins aren't going to help you learn general play techniques, but they certainly can get you through some very tough content. A lot of the fights in this game will have a specific plugin. The Fight Caves Wave plugin can help you keep track of what's coming next. The Tombs of a Mascot plugin is absolutely game changing and solves half the puzzles in this raid for you. Cox Editions add some various quality of life features, honestly the possibilities are endless. Whenever you're tackling any new content, if you want to make things as simple as possible, I'd always recommend having a quick search on Google, YouTube, Reddit or whatever you like to make sure there are no essential player made quality of life changes that you're missing out on. They can make hard content super easy and tedious content fun, although if you're here for a challenge there is something to be said for going into content with no extra assistance whatsoever. That's it from me, if you've made it this far you definitely owe me a like and a subscribe, thanks for sticking around, I'll see you next time.